Hello and welcome to our new series, Fan and Science, where we break down the weapons, the engineering, the architecture, the biology of your favorite fandoms. Joining me here is the person I know who knows the most about guns, tanks, ammunition, and anything of that sort, Nick. Hey, I'm the self-appointed uh, weapon expert here. Very cool. As well as the only one of us to have a master's degree uh, in engineering, Matt. Hello. I am Matt Rickert Bickert Badenman. Yeah, that, that is his. Me. That is his legal name, actually. Yes, that's my Boxing legal name for everybody. Absolutely. That's pretty epic. What are we talking about today, gentlemen? Uh, today we are going to be going over uh, the Warhammer Forty Thousand weapon, the Bolter. Um, we will be describe. We will be outlining for you how it is described to work in lore and everything that goes with it. We will be giving our opinions on it as just from a fan perspective of being a fan of Warhammer. And then we're going to break down uh, the problems with the Bolter if it was a real gun and how we would fix it. Now, just just some uh, uh, some assumptions we're going to make. Um, all fictional materials are go will work as they are described to us because obviously this stuff isn't real, so we have to take it at our face value. And by we mean it works in real life, we are assuming we are in the 41st millennium, there are these super soldiers who can carry the big guns and the ammunition. Why isn't it working? Because we we're working off of real-world physics, but we're saying in-universe, because obviously we can't hold... Regular human beings can't hold a 75 caliber autocannon and fire it off and not still have shoulders afterwards. I Perhaps a better way of looking at it is, imagine if we in the real world had access to these materials, these um, special metals and elements. Imagine if we had access to them, would we design it? Would we make it work the way that it does? We probably won't. We might not. We'll have to see. We definitely mm. wouldn't. All right. <laughs> so, first off, <clears throat> what is the, the Bolter? The Bolter is the standard issue gun of the Space Marines and Sisters of Battle. Um, <clears throat> it is the most iconic Warhammer gun. If you've ever seen uh, art of Space Marines or art of Warhammer 40,000, you probably know what the Bolter looks like. What separates the Bolter from other, uh, other guns is that uh, the bullets have a gyrojet uh, design with a conventional propellant, which means that the bullets fire out of the gun like a normal traditional gun does. The firing pin activates the gunpowder and it is expelled from the barrel. However, <clears throat> when it hits the edge of the barrel, the uh, the, fu the fuse has ignited the propellant that is inside of the bolt, which then shoots out towards its opponent, and then once it has lodged in whatever you shot at, uh, another fuse activates and the round proceeds to explode. Uh, it is the... Uh, basically, think of an RPG, uh, make it slightly smaller, and then you're firing that, it, that out of a submachine gun, especially. I've I've heard someone describe it as if what if you had a a forty millimeter grenade launcher that could pierce into somebody, but that's that's a little a little bit too big. It goes boom. It's pretty cool. It has two stage firing propellant. It's pretty cool. I think. What do you guys think? Uh, I I think conceptually, just seeing it, playing with it in video games, if I could actually use one in real life really fun gun it would be the most sought after weapon for collectors to use and fire at a range i mean it would be so fucking hilarious to just put up a poster of mr jelking jackington the third and just blow him up from inside uh some other information on it is that it is a media it is a medium range anti-personnel weapon i couldn't exactly find what I the 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 the, rain, the effective range of a bolter isn't really something that's been written anywhere because like if we're going off of the tabletop because you're playing on a tabletop it only has a range of like five inches like twenty four inches but obviously that's that's not that doesn't scale to real world so medium range gun you're not going to be hitting anybody from like super far away but if he's right in front of you this is the gun you want to carry the bullet is seventy five caliber. For those who don't know anything about guns, uh, the caliber is a measure of the diameter of the bullet in inches. It's 0 0.7 inches around a diameter. This is about slightly bigger than a 12 gauge in terms of size. Um, 
In terms of how much damage mm-hmm. this thing does, it's described as annihilating anything without armor and disabling light vehicles. I don't know of any moments where I've seen bolter rounds click, like clink off of anything, but any it seems that anything can be killed by just firing a, a full clip of your bolter into it. Uh, as for the speed, uh, Space Marines, despite their reflexes, have never really been known to dodge uh, bolts. And 1d4chan suggests that it's somewhere around 1,750 feet uh, per second, uh, which translates to 533 meters per second. Uh, this is actually slower than... Uh, Nick, did you say it was a 20 millimeter autocannon? Yeah, uh, 20 millimeters usually travel 3,000 um, yeah. Like in the 3,000. And that, uh, 20 millimeter is f- bigger than a bolt around, right? Uh, by it's, it's one... slightly bigger or equivalent. The bolt is like a 19 millimeter. It's like mm-hmm. just shy of being a 20 mil. Mm-hmm. The, I, I would say functionally, though, if you're just looking at them right next to each other, you could say that in terms of the mass size of the bullet, you're you're looking at the same basic type of bullet. Yeah, it's well, just different different numbering systems essentially. It's it, they're they're pretty much the equivalent of each other. I want to say the bullet's the same at all, especially with the way they have it firing. But we'll get to that. Well, in terms, in terms yes, of size. Well, the the bullet itself is entirely different. But if we're just talking about like functionality, it should be the same. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if I compress the, a loaf of bread and compare it to a breadstick, they're going to be two different things. But they're they're like the same size. They're like the same 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 size. Why are we compressing bread for measurement and comparison? What I, the hell? Because we live me. in America. That's how we measure things. I'm also in America. What the hell? Anyways, <laughs> so the uh, the bolter, uh, specifically what is known as the Godwin pattern bolter, is specifically made for space marines, and that means that a regular man can't pick this thing up. Why? Because not only is it too, not because not only is it too large for you to hold in your hands, but it's also forty pounds. The ammu- the the clip itself is what did we just say? Like seven pound, more than seven pounds, uh, right? Yeah, it, it, it's extremely heavy. It's six pounds each. Yes, and the recoil of a uh, of a Astartes pattern bolt gun, assuming you aren't using a special firing brace or it has been mounted somewhere, the recoil would shatter uh, your arm, um, which makes it, you know, not, not great for uh, humans to use. Also, hu- regular humans, it is illegal for them to own bolt rounds or uh, bolter uh, bolters, and you will get a heavy fine and perhaps a beating by your local Adeptus Arbity. If you don't get executed, of course. Bolters are also uh, specially made. Um, <clears throat> they don't. Obviously, this is this is a conventional weapon that needs uh, these uh, specialty ammunition, specialty gun, uh, which is why it is not given to standard troops because standard troops get the cheap las guns, and it's easier to produce a las gun and man- maintain it than it is compared to a bolter. <clears throat> as we mentioned, it has the, that two stage uh, process as to not damage the. Uh, uh, the uh, the, the barrel. barrel by the uh, build of gases inside of it, and it is made with the following materials. Each bolt is d- is made with a diamantine tip. Here's the problem with Warhammer as a setting: none of its materials are defined in any way. But I found a post that summed it up properly. Diamantine, as it's described, is most likely a material that has like the hardness of diamond, hence the name diamantine means diamond-like. But it 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 is Clo- closely more related to a steel because diamonds have no tensile strength. You can just shatter them. It, the, the hardness is a bit bit of a misnomer. It is not. Oh, diamond is indestructible. It's um. Well, it can't be scratched. Isn't isn't that the what it's primarily diamond, good yeah, for? You, you can't really scratch a diamond. Like you can't wear down a diamond. Diamond can be broken yeah. though. That is something that yes. can happen to it. The core is usually made from depleted uranium. Depleted uranium is a amazing material. It's super dense. It can be used for radi- uh, radioactive shielding. It catches fire when you shoot something with it, and it uh, is self-sharpening. It remains sharp even once it's lodged itself into a target. 
And the anti-armor variants uh, replace this delete depleted uranium with a material called adamantium. It is not as strong as the Marvel adamantium, but it is an incredible metal in the Warhammer universe that's stronger than anything that we have. Um, obviously, it is nebulously stronger, but um, that's just what we have to go off of. There are many different types of bolts. There are bolts that are just conventional that don't have the rocket um, built into them. There are bolts that are filled with things like uh, liquid nitrogen, uh, tyranid destroying acid. Uh, you can pack promethium, which is basically like space napalm. Anything under the sun that you could think of that you might need to edit a bolt round to deal with. Uh, you also have like uh, splintering uh, tips. Uh, it's available. The gun can either be semi auto or burst fire. This is something that a lot of media gets wrong. Like if you play Dawn of War, they treat the bolter like it's just like a regular machine gun. It's the, the the fire rate is um, a bit a bit a bit slower than just oh yeah it's just rapid fire. Uh, the regular sickle magazine that you can stick into the bolter holds thirty rounds. Uh, there are also mod, mod variants of this. There are drum mags. There are various different uh, add-ons, and obviously it's an incredibly heavy weapon. And there are other variants there are the heavy bolters there are the bolt pistols there are the storm bolters which is basically just two bolters glued together um heavy really bolters better. can fire up to one caliber shells and the bolters they put on the fucking titans shoot bolts the size of human skulls which i'm sure if we could put into a caliber if we had the diameter of a skull but i don't know That'd be that like, off the top what, of my five head caliber? um it'd be around like I want to say anywhere from 260 millimeter to 340. Damn. Yeah, no, don't. That caliber, caliber then. Maybe 10. Yeah, uh, ba ba way. basically, for, on its own, a bol you will not survive getting hit with a bolter. Maybe in the leg, maybe in the arm, but it, it's it's just going to blow you, blow up just about anything. At least how it's described in games, how it's shown in games and the tabletop and the lore. That if you if you are a normal human who got hit literally one time by any variant of the bolter, you're dead. You're just literally going to die right there. Fine course, red like, mist. Yes, big fine red mist. And of course, like Sergio said, they've got a shit ton of variants of it because there's a lot of big enemies of the Imperium. And of course, they get more and more and more more ridiculous with these guns. I mean, they it's the it's what Halo Infinite could have been as an Imperium gun. I mean, it's just everything. They just constantly turn it into new things. They're constantly using it because in the lore, it's very effective. So why don't you keep using it in the lore? Well, so what are um, what are our general thoughts on life. the bolter? Not as not as uh, not as uh, amateur scientists and analysts, but just like as like fans of the as property. Fans. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> who wants to go first? Eh? Uh, I'll go first. Um, I think that the bolter is the quintessential. I'm a dude in my 30s, living in like the 80s. And I think this is a fucking cool gun that I heard about because I th heard about gyrojet guns from like 40 years ago. And I'm like, this is the future of weapons. I think I should make something about it. And then you do. And you continue to describe it as the most frankly fucking ridiculous gun ever made. I mean, it's I think compared to almost any other um form of science fiction i can't really think of anything quite as absurd as the bolter it's just so silly from so many different directions even gears of war i think doesn't have anything that's quite that silly if uh yeah if, imagine if dom could just dual wield bolters but um it's a good i, I think it's a very fun gun I th and and that's sort of what the design principle was in the first place when it was made by the original designers. It, it was meant to be cool and fun. It was not meant to do anything else, really. And it and it succeeds at being cool and fun. I, I said it's an iconic gun of Warhammer Forty Thousand. I think if you don't know much of anything about Forty Thousand, you've probably heard about the Bolter. It's it's that widespread and that cool of a gun. 
my my thought honestly it's my favorite fictional firearm it's powerful it's ridiculous and honestly if you get put in the 40th millennium and you got like a huge tyranid horde or a bunch of chaos space marines and they're like pick some now well i'm grabbing the fucking he the, the heaviest bolter you have and I'm going to fucking lay waste to what's ever in front of me. Because, let's be real here, do you want to fight the 20-foot Carnifex with the chainsaw, or do you want to shoot a heavy bolter at it? <laughs> yep. Pretty am simple I, way of looking at it. And I thought, as a guy that mm -hmm. knows how weapons work, this is one of the biggest nightmares I've ever seen. But from the fact of, it's a handheld auto cannon that fires explosive shells and depleted uranium, armor-piercing rounds. It'd be awesome. You could oh, blow yeah. up a building in one magazine. That's pretty sick. You oh, could yeah. shoot down aircraft. It'd be awesome from that perspective. It'd be okay. fucking cool from that okay. perspective. Okay, you can't shoot down aircraft. It doesn't have that long range, but we'll get to Yeah, it has piss but, range. But the bolter in terms of design, I love the big boxy shape. It's a very gothic-styled. I love the Imperium crest on it. I love the Storm Bolter, even though that thing is a nightmare, but uh, that is a fun weapon. It matches mm -hmm. Warhammer's more art style perfectly as a weapon, too. Yeah. Not to, not to mention, it, there's nothing really else like it in fiction. It, it is truly unique. I would, I would say somebody would have had to have, like, copied it by now, but I can't think of any other guns that look like the Bolter. It's just... It, it's, it, it's the... It's, it's like... One of a kind. That it is. That it is. So let's talk also about the issues with the bolter. <laughs> it's also completely and utterly unfeasible. So let's talk about the problems with the bolter, starting with the issues with gyrojet ammunition. Nick, I think you could be the one to talk about this. All right. Well, gyrojets are a type of ammunition that we experimented with in a lot in the Cold War era. I believe it was 1964 is when the first gyrojet weapon was made. The idea is that a gyrojet is a new type of propellant which removes any um, black powder, powder par cartridge from a weapon. It is basically, your bullets are now rocket propelled. It reduces recoil heavily because there's no internal explosion mechanism. Mm -hmm. This program failed. Gyrojets cause a lot of internal damage to weapons, along with being much more costly, less safe, and, uh, among other things, they have a limited range, much shorter than a normal bullet. While they do have a constant velocity, they have a drop-off because eventually that rocket runs out of fuel. Yep. Uh, there's only two weapons that have ever gyrojet oriented, the gyrojet pistol and the gyrojet carbine. Do yourself a favor and buy one and have fun with it. It'd probably be fun. Uh, if it explodes in your hands, I didn't tell you to get it. Now, why does it explode in your hands? What what well, possibly could be the problem with the gyrojets that causes that? Alright, well, rockets are pretty volatile. Imagine if you had about 60 of them on your belt. It's like loading yourself yes. with an M80 firecracker or something like that. And this is just a small point that I'll make that's not really related to the Bolter or Gyrojets, but Warhammer 40,000 is a universe that people always say, oh, it's there's decay and rot in the Imperium of Man. Logistics are hell. Uh, everything is fucking falling apart. There's no way that uh, you could possibly have your, you know, like, really good, clean stuff anywhere in, in the entire galaxy. And yet, somehow, there's always enough Bolter ammunition to go around. And if we were to apply realist, uh, realistic logistical problems, this ammunition is unfathomably difficult to create. Gyrojet ammunition on its own is very difficult and expensive to create. Each bullet is quite expensive. And um, yeah, if with yeah, yeah, and you know, in the lore that you know they split, there's a reason why it doesn't everybody doesn't have a bolt gun. And if we get a little like more real with our logistics here, you can imagine you're a space marine. Your commander goes, "Here's your bolter. You only get one. Don't waste your ammunition." If a big thing of bolter ammunition, which is filled with conventional gunpowder and regular uh, rocket propellant, gets blown up, that is 
thousands of Imperial credits wasted, and also you can't just necessarily go and get more bolts. Same thing if you, if you are uh, if the gun misfires, your power armor might protect you from the explosion. Uh, but your bolter is destroyed. If your bolter <coughs> misfires into the ground, again, your power armor might protect you from that explosion, but you You're just out of the gun. you just caused an you you caused an, an explosion and you might have harmed somebody in the process because your gun misfired. Or I don't even you know, want accidentally to discharged. Go ahead, Nick. I don't even want to imagine what it'd be like if you had to be like an ammunition carrier for the bolter ammo, because you get hit, you're gonna explode by a you're going to explode like eight times. Yeah, because like I, I've seen footage of uh, ammo cook-offs, which for anyone who doesn't know, ammo is explosive. Propellant is just an explosive substance. Um, even normal rounds, such as like assault rifle rounds, the five, five, six, or seven point six two, in large quantities, even the tiniest they pistol explode. rounds, they're yeah, all they explosive. Explode. And when they explode, they also shoot off too. Yeah. Because that's what the explosion is. Yeah, so suddenly you have a guy turning into a pine cone of death. Exploding. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just to wonder, the small thing about the logistics, um, creating a bullet that has a conventional explosive and a gyrojet launch at the same time? Totally unfeasible. You would oh, yeah. completely ruin the gyrojet mechanism by virtue of launching it out of the barrel as a conventional uh, bullet in the first case. Because you, you can imagine a rocket is very delicate and gyrogen ammunition was notoriously completely inaccurate. Not just because it had short range, but also because if you had any imperfection on the jet, it would just totally fail it would not be able to reach its target with any level of accuracy. And combining a conventional explosive right behind your delicate gyrogen ammunition is a surefire way to completely bust the fuck out of it. I do want to do something funny, too. Yeah. Now, the entire point of gyrojets is that they have very little recoil, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. I love how they immediately offset that by giving it a uh, initial explosion from a normal shell casing first. Yes, so the gyrojet's entire benefit, the only reason you would use this inferior ammunition otherwise, is completely nullified. Well, I'll, say, I'll segue right out of that and say, giving your super godlike, ultra-genetically enhanced super soldiers a bullet that is designed to be used by people who cannot handle the recoil is entirely counterproductive. It makes no sense. Yes, and so we are going to talk about the other part of the bolt, or specifically the explosive part of the ammunition. Now, don't get me wrong, as Nick for sure knows, we have rounds that are designed to explode when you fire them, but we, but every, just about every bolt around is meant to, the, the, the philosophy of the bolter is, I can penetrate into a target, blow him open, and continue laying down fire, because obviously almost everything that you fight in Warhammer is armored, or is inside some, like, Dreadnought, or Terminator armor that you need to get open to get into the person. And I'm going to explain why you don't really need the explosion inside the target, because the bolt can do that for you. So there's a little phenomenon that we call explosive cavitation. And I, I actually uh, found a source from a surgeon who wrote a PowerPoint on uh, bullet wounds. So I am quoting from that. So lower velocity bullets that are traveling less than a thousand feet per second uh, just crush and tear through your flesh. So basically you get shot by a gun, which either the shells didn't have a lot of powder, low, small barrel, big caliber. They enter through cut through you, pop out the back. This is generally how you want to be shot. If you are to be shot, this is this is what you would you, you would want because we're just going straight through. However, higher velocity rounds, more than 2,000 feet per second, cause cavitation. And cavitation is a, uh, <clears throat> a process in which the energy of the bullet creates a negative pressure cavity around the bullet that then collapses in on itself. It's creating a bubble and it 
slams back together by the time the bullet has exited uh, the wound. Now, uh, elastic tissues, like your lungs, for example, can handle this. They're, they're meant to stretch. They're hollow to begin with. So that's not a problem. But the problem is when it goes into inelastic tissues, t tissues that aren't supposed to stretch all that much, um, it damages them. It, go it goes through your liver. It makes a bubble inside your liver. It collapses. It's damaged that organ and then left the body. Uh, muscles and bone they have a higher tensile strength than most tissues, so they're kind of protected by this effect. But organs and soft tissues are most at risk. Um, there's a few. There's a few different types of cavitation. Um, uh, if the if the bullet path is small, usually you'll just get a small entrance, and then you'll get big exit, just blowing out the the back when it when it leaves through. Longer bullet paths have a small entrance and a small exit, but they have a a big hole that happens in the middle because the energy surrounds the, the bullet path and then slams shut. And at the really, really high end of things, 48,000 feet per second, this is the speed of sound in water, because when the bullet is inside you, you have to just pretend that it, you shot it through some fluid. Uh, the, the, the sonic boom shockwave will happen inside your body. Uh, this compresses any tissue that's in front of the bullet, but that's, that shockwave is going to rip through your body and cause untold amounts of damage. The The conclusion to this is that if you just get rid of the gyro jet and you just fire the bolter with a, like a shit ton of powder with a big barrel because we are putting them in the hands of walking tanks that can lift trucks with their uh, with just with one hand. Armor. Yeah, you... Yeah. There's no pur pur purpose for the rocket. Fire that 75 caliber round at the speed of sound and just explode whatever you just shot shot with it. Yeah. That's one way to say it. And, uh... I, think I'll, 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 I also just want to make... Reset. Yeah, go ahead. I, I also just want to make another point because I, I, see, I see a lot of people... Um, uh, this is not to get political or anything. This is just, we are just talking from a scientific standpoint. A lot of people go like, "Oh, the AR-15 is so dangerous because of the the explosive cavity." Any high velocity round you get shot with. I'm sorry to tell you, but guns are scary. Weapons are scary. Weapons do untold things to the body when you are hit with them. I if if I have a small round and I fire it, you know, very fast, this effect can happen to you. It, it, it's, it's not it just not. this one gun it's it's a bunch of guns that, that that can do this yeah believe it or not bullets are scary on their own yes very scary and as Sergio aptly described if you have a big bullet that is traveling supersonic at like Mach 2 Mach 3 it's already broken the sound barrier and it's going to stop breaking the sound barrier the second it enters your body it's just going to fucking blow you apart and a 75 caliber round you get shot one time with a conventional 75 caliber round right now as you're listening to this podcast not a threat by the way you will just die you're just going to die it's that big of a round it's that scary i'm not even sure having medical attention right away would help because that's a 20 millimeter round essentially that's a cannon I mean, round essentially if it hits you gonna sever an artery somewhere it's, it's either going to sever an artery, it's going to rupture an organ, it's going to be very nasty. Now, with all that said, I still think it's a cool gun, but we haven't even really totally covered all the physics problems of, of the gun. I mean, there's, there's logistical problems, there's physics problems, there's just contrivances, essentially, of why they're using the gyrojet mechanism in general. Um, I, what, what I've always found curious, do you mind if I go on about, uh, Gauss weaponry for a little bit? Go ahead. It fits his Warhammer. The, okay, never yes. mind. No, the Necrons don't have it. They don't so have I'll, Gauss. Yeah, so I'll have a small aside here. People, when they're hearing the word Gauss in <laughs> reference to Warhammer, they're probably, they're probably saying to me, well, Matt, there's already Gauss weaponry in Warhammer. The fucking Necrons use it. Well, I'm sorry, good sir. The Necrons use fake news Gauss weaponry. The the best way to describe uh um uh the uh the Necron the Necrons use a molecular flare. Um you magnets are involved but it's mainly using them to create an energy that strips the atoms 
from whatever you shot from it. That is not a Goss weapon. It is incorrectly named. Very incorrectly named. Because a real Goss weapon, we actually have Goss weaponry right now as we're talking. And the only people who have access to it right now really are the Navy. Because they're making rail guns, which a rail gun is a Gauss type of weapon, essentially. It's the same just branch of guns. And all you're doing is you're using magnets instead of explosives to propel your gun. Now, the magnets are still difficult to power. They still generate an insane amount of heat. So it's not good from a maintenance perspective. What it is good for is just raw fucking devastation perspective. These bullets, these bits of metal that come out of these Gauss weapons, there's there's nothing really special about them. You literally just stick magnetic metal into the gun, and it just launches out at a frighteningly high speed. And we're talking something like Mach 5 or Mach 6, just ludicrous, ludicrous speeds. Now you may say, oh, well, we had like Mach 2 or Mach 3 weaponry earlier. How is doubling it going to be that much better? Well, if you uh, remember from physics, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. If you double or triple the velocity that we're talking about here, then you're going to either quadruple or uh, I'll, I'll use a fun word, nonuple your amount of energy. You're going to get either somewhere between four and nine times the amount of damage we just talked about with those 20 millimeter rounds launching off at like Mach 2 or 3. Think about that. The already devastating, rupturing, internal, exploding, fucking heavy metal damage. Increase that four to nine times. That's what you would probably need to use against real life Tyranids. But we have the admittedly wonderfully very cool Bolter instead of a really cool Gauss weaponry. Yes, and I think that leads to how we would fix the Bolter's problems. Uh, obviously, if we're just not trying to change the weapon entirely, because uh, you could always make the concession that they lost the F... They, they haven't found the FTL file. They don't have the, 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 the technology to do it. But um, just make the Bolter a conventional weapon, and you do away with all of the, the issues. Do I want the Bolter to be quote unquote fixed like that? No, hell no. I think it's oh, hilarious the way that it is and I, I wouldn't want them to change it. Yeah, and it and it's not like we're saying like they can't have explo exploding rounds, but that probably shouldn't be the norm. Not every bolter should like round should have like like realistically be the explosive type. Yeah. Could be could, because funnily enough, the the round that we want for the bolter is used for the stalker bolter, and it's a it's a silence bolter because it doesn't use the rocket, and it's just a conventional shell, and they use it for stealth because they because the the, the the stalker bolter has a much longer range, but it's like that should be the you know thing. Like if you like like if you have a heavy bolter in placement and you load that thing with like armor piercing and explosive rounds, yeah. Mount that thing on a Bane Blade, which they have those mounted on Bane Blades, or a Lehman Russ. That's what you want that for. Is there how to fix a Bolton? Um, we already kind of covered the problems in the fixing of it. In the, in I mean, unless you have any uh, suggestions, Matt. Matt, um, I mean, Nick. Fixing the Bolton? Uh, well, the easy way to fix the Bolton is just to... But the thing is, the ammo is hard to make. It's expensive. It's costly. So mm -hmm. I do say we do the gold Vietnam era strategy with the M16 and just convert them all to be the stock to pull up the bearing of a DMR. That way people are less prone to wasting ammo, has a longer barrel length, and just give them armor piercing rounds in general. Oh, and Wait, we also can make length? the Gauss Bolter. Yes, the Gauss Bolter would be a hilarious, wonderful weapon. A handheld railgun. Very based. Yes, and um, as in terms of the barrel length, because we, we we definitely agree that you you can get some more range on the thing if you increase it. I believe uh, the upgraded Primaris Bolt rifle uh, does actually feature a slightly longer barrel in terms of its uh, um, 
in terms of the the improvements on the design. It took hundreds of years for people to look at that gun and say, "We need the barrel to be longer." Yeah, yeah, we need the barrel to be slightly longer. Two inches. That's all I can get you. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, the Mark II call pattern bolt rifle. Let's see the statistics on that. Uh, let's see here. It's a new ver ver version of the Venerable Bolt Gun. Uh, larger and longer barreled upgrade of the standard bolter, allowing for longer range and arc piercing capability. The bolt rifle is highly m modular, allowing for a number of easily created variants, such as the auto bolt rifle and the stalker bolt rifle, which is just um, the the previous stalker bolter. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, in in conclusion, it's it's a it's a it's a high it's it's a little unrealistic weapon in a in a very exaggerated and um, crazy universe. Um, it's it's it it definitely screams, "Oh, I thought this was cool," and not that I know anything about guns. But overall, it it fits its purpose. Um, it 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 mm -hmm. it does what it needs to. And I think um some people might find it surprisingly realistic that there actually is real gyro jet ammunition. Uh, that was used in history. It's just so funny that it is. It was used for the exact opposite reason that you might expect it to be used for in uh, the Warhammer setting. Either way, the bolt is a cool gun. They just have a lot of oh, issues yeah. if you look at it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I think the, the the issues that I have with it are largely just the, 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 these are largely just um things that don't matter as far as enjoying Warhammer. In the first place, like, yeah, it's a hilariously unrealistic weapon. That doesn't matter a whole lot, though, as far as like digging into Warhammer, enjoying the the, the fights and the ridiculous nonsense that happens in it. And there's there's lots to love about Warhammer. There's, and, there's uh, one thing I, there's the one thing I always say about any uh, vehicle, weapon, or armor from any any franchise. You can like what you like, but at the end of the day. If you try to justify it, it's like looking for brains in a beauty contest. Contest. Ouch. Damn. Am I wrong? Damn. Am I, uh, yeah, I, and, I, and personally, I, I love the Lancer. The Lancer's awesome, but it's completely off beat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think at the end of the day, my problem with with Warhammer's uh, world building, as much as I I, I I I just described to you, like you know, I you know, we we have diagrams. We know we know what the bolter is like, like how the bolts work and how the gun works, and all this information about its logistics and the crafting, and you know why only certain people can use it. The like how there's civilian variants that have a slightly lower caliber, and that you need power armor uh, to wield one. But the problem that makes this especially hard to analyze is, like I said, the materials. The material, like the materials, are very inconsistent because there's n there's no stats on them. I can't tell you how dangerous this thing would be when I get yeah, it's made out of scrimblo bimblium, and it's super strong. It's like that's not telling me anything. I think that's sort of by design that they don't want to uh, describe it in any real detail. Yeah, but that, did, but see, that, that, that that leads that leads to uh, that that leads to authors not having any idea of like what anything. As I mentioned before, the the the, the bolter is depicted wildly differently in almost any media that you see, and also it's like I I need some consistency in like what this material can do because like. Oh, this takes mana adamantium, and then one author has it survive this, and then another author has it survive this. It just makes things inconsistent. I'm certain somebody is going to say that if you tried to make it more realistic, it would be uh, just killing all the fun. No, it's no, it's actively it's actively murdering my fun because I don't know how strong something. I I, I need to go like, oh yeah, well my my uh. Uh, my sp my power armor is made out of uh, uh, adamantium uh, scrimblo bimblium alloy. It has a tensile strength of ten thousand. Uh, was it was it measured in like pascals or something? Uh, what is tensile strength measured in? Just measure it in gigafarts, dude. Uh, yeah, you can you can measure it in um. Well, compressive forces would be pascal. You would measure it in just pounds, just force. 
for uh yeah and it can it can it can it can withstand sixty nine thousand four hundred twenty uh pounds of force being being levied at it. it also it, it is it is pascals okay yeah that makes sense i'm not I talking mean, about warhammer and inconsistency like you yeah. look at any of the game trailers for like dawn of war or space you just get taken out instantly from one shot like a dreadnought gets blown from a single grenade yeah, or they, or they, or they forget that the the bolter rounds explode. Uh, Forty Space Marine d- does it does have that, but I, I think in all of the Dawn of War trailers, the bolts never explode. Yeah, which doesn't make any sense. The um, the uh, the thing about Warhammer is I kind of stopped caring about any kind of like consistent stakes. And consistent explanations by the time I realized that there were like basically four extra sets of testicles in the Space Marine in case they need to jelk left and right while they're jelking. They do not have extra too. testicles. You don't know that. A writer could fucking add Space Marine super testicles and it could be done. They could do that. There's no reason not to have testicles. Well, they have testicles, <laughs> but they don't have extra testicles. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, Sergio. Are you going to make the fucking space... Jelk Morris that have more testicles? Hear me, hear me out on this, right? <laughs> okay. Hear me out on this one. All right, you ran the poll. Do you think Space Marines would be team balls or no balls? I, th- I, I think Space Marines would be four balls. Then yeah, then they would have four balls. The more balls you have, the stronger you are. Oh my god. Uh, it's even a quad pack. But like, space marines literally canonically get memories from eating something. Oh that's yeah, so they never use. That's uh, yeah, so that's one of my favorite things. Fucking dumb. It's 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 not dumb. It's dumb in the fact that they never use it. Cause you know how fucking like useful that would be. Because because the whole like in the lore is like you well, land you on like a planet and meat. you eat. And you, you, you eat you eat like a predator or something like that, and it gives you like it, it's like it's memory so you can get like a scout of the place. Like that seems like it'd be it'd be something that's like impor- like like a good like survival thing to have and they never use it. Oh yeah, no, it's really useful. But how? How uh, that is a good question. I'm currently on the page. Which one is that? There's- I don't uh, unless there's like shit with the warp. I have no idea how you could possibly uh, do that. Let's see here. The... I mean, Nick, you're no biologist, but you can agree with me that that there's no possible way you could do that. Uh, you have to link like your brain into something's like brain somehow to steal its memory. I assume, but no, they eat it. They don't even eat the brain. They just okay. Eat so, meat. okay. So here is the here is the explanation. Hmm. It How says, it uh, "Okay, so this special organism planted between the thoracic vertebrae and the stomach wall is designed to absorb information in any DNA, RNA, or protein sequences related to experience or memory. This implant allows space marine to literally learn by eating." What? No, the autophagia no transmits the gained information to the Astartes brain as a set of memories or experiences. Okay, all right. So the, the so Warhammer uses the Assassin's Creed genetic memory uh, <laughs> assumption that your memories are stored within your DNA. So if you consume somebody's cells, you can get their memories. That's so dumb. This is objectively not true, but if 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 that that is quite the case in the Warhammer universe, then yes, it works within the the, the universe. If we're going to make that assumption, uh, that's so silly. But yeah, no, it's 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 it's, it's whether or not it's silly, it's super useful, and they just don't use it. Or like how the the Space Marines have acid spit. Oh yeah, they, and they do. don't ever use it. Oh yeah. Or the because, like, like, I, I, I think the example they give is like you get captured and you could spit on your uh, manacles and break free. And no, I don't think anybody ever does that. Or the fact they have night vision, but they have night vision scopes and their weapons still. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, 
This is so strange. I mean, I mean, maybe their night vision isn't as good because I, I I don't know the extent of their uh, their like how good their night vision is. Hmm. Oh, here's another one. Uh, they have what is called the preomnor or the neutralizer. It is a second or pre-stomach spliced into their digestive system above the original stomach that allows space marines to eat otherwise poisonous or completely indigestible materials. It is also capable of biochemically analyzing ingesting materials and neutralizing most biochemical and orga inorganic toxins. And many others remain unknown save for their toxic effects. Hmm. They never use this. Oh, also, the toxins that they eat from this go into their Betcher's gland, which is the gland they use to, to shoot out the acid. So they don't what use the either fuck? of those. What the fuck? <laughs> it's the organ of disuse. Yeah, uh, so th those, the Betcher's gland and that other one, they work in tandem to transform an Asardi slime into a corrosive blinding acid when consciously triggered. This allows <laughs> the Space Marine to spit a wad of corrosive acid with the effect of blinding, wounding, and even killing an enemy outright. This implants more common uses to aid in the digestion of unusually difficult or impossible things to digest, such as cellulose. Uh, in the genes eat of several primarchs, like Rogel Dorn, this organ has atrophied, is no longer effective, or simply ceased to function entirely in these sorry, these chapters that use those primarchs gene seed. So I guess most of them don't have it, but for the ones that, that like they use, like hand to hand, <laughs> you fucking spit acid in, in the person's face. Yeah, I mean, come on, bro. Also, obviously, we haven't read all of the books, so if someone in the, who's listening wants to comment on Twitter, well, actually, in uh, this book, they use it, then, all right, they used it. Thank, go thank God someone remembered. Yes. I'm, I'm sure they do somewhere. They, mu they must use it somewhere, right? I mean, because like, because like, 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 authors will remember that uh, space marines have two hearts. There are plenty of instances of like when you want to like yes. describe like grievously ruining a space marine is that you took out one of the hearts. Yes. Yes. Ugh. But back to the bolter. Very cool. Very unrealistic. Wildly unrealistic. Oh. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd say it's more impractical than un than unrealistic. I'm not convinced that you could get a bullet that's both gyrojet and conventional firing to ever fire. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, pro I mean, prob I mean, probably, but I, I think there, I think there, there's probably more. I wouldn't give this a C, maybe like a C minus, if I was to rank it on realism. I could agree with that. Because we can, because we easily fixed it. We we easily fixed it. We just removed the gyro jet and just said, just make it a just a conventional just gun. I'm I'm sure yeah, there I'm, are more even more ridiculous guns out there than than this, like what Call yes, of Duty and, and Vanguard likes to do to World War II weapons. Yes, and just to reiterate to to whoever may be insane enough to listen to us, I don't think a Games Workshop writer should go. <laughs> Oh, these people are so smart. I should rewrite the bolter. And then just completely retcon bolters. I think at this point, it, it just is what it is. And you know what? It's a fun, it's a fun, goofy gun. It's a very fun, very yeah, goofy Yeah, like, gun. The only, I, 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 I would just want it to be written more consistently with the lore. Like, if you write, like, an orc got shot through the, uh, like, the head with, with a bolter, remember that it's going to explode and pop that half of his skull off. Um, you know, yes. if you're designing a Warhammer schematic and somebody shoots somebody with a bolter, I expect big hole out the at the back of him. Very big. Because 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 if it because if it didn't embed, then that then it's going to blow a hole out the out the back of that guy's back. Yeah, mm. a big ass hole at that too. <laughs> And also, let's reiter reiterate: if we could hold, t if, if if there was a portable twenty millimeter auto cannon that we could just hold, hell yeah! Like, Bolter is a man's man weapon. Like, it's just, it's, it's just great. Cool. There's there's nothing else to say about it. No, I will I will say you did give it a C minus. I'll have to give this thing a C, a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Because um, twenty millimeter cannons are already open that people have. Fired, there's sniper rifles, so and eventually if we do get strong enough recoil springs, which you know the AA twelve, which is a modern shotgun, 
has no recoil before firing fully automatic with a shotgun, you know, 12 gauge. Yeah, I, I, I did I did hear somebody com- comparing firing a bolter to firing an AA-12. I don't think it's that, because the bolter has no stock, and I don't see how any recoil spring would help you with that godforsaken uh, shell design. Yeah, obviously, but I, th- I think it was more it's an automatic weapon that fires 12 gauges, and the bolter is the bolt is about the size of a 12 gauge uh, shell, but obviously they're, they, they, they're two different... Um, on how they operate. Maybe you want to go get more extreme. There is a Russian shotgun called the K, uh, KHG, I believe. Let me, let me make sure. Uh, no, the KSG shotgun. And, no, not... Oh, God damn it. What is it? My bad. No, it's all good. Um, the KS-23? Is that what I'm thinking? Of? Yeah. The KS-23 is a 23mm shotgun. Oh, uh, yeah. It has no stock. It well, usually it's a riot control weapon. Apparently, you still load buckshot. But uh, yeah. But can you put twenty three millimeter shells in it? Oh yeah, that's an eight gauge. So it's a bolt. Mm. So it's a, so it's a real life bolter, basically. Yeah, if you put a slug into it, it could be a real life bolter. What's it called? The KS-23. Uh, KS-23. A Soviet Well, if you want to see something Soviet. really fun, is <clears throat> look up somebody firing a two-gauge. Oh, the, those are just cannons. I don't care. Yeah, they are. <clears throat> uh, they're actually... Uh, a variant of it, the Toast-123, is actually banned for import into the United States. That's what Damn. they think. I want to take one from the <laughs> conflict. <laughs> uh, they are being they. The, it is a weapon that is used in Ukraine. I, I can't wait to hear the fucking Geneva Convention. Like, oh, they fucking bl- blew up my commissar with with the fucking shotgun. They need to be banned. I never understood the shotgun argument because, like, it was just a stall. It it was it, it was just to like, it j- just just. To have something to like distract from what was going on. It, I don't think right. it was ever like a serious thing. All right, I, I'm just gonna say I get. I'm gonna say this because I, I I like to take the opportunity to shit on uh, World War One, World War Two Germany as much as possible to piss as many people off. The fact they bitched about the shotgun being so effective at clearing trenches as calling it inhumane is such bullshit. When they use gas and human bear traps on people. Mm-hmm. I just want to say that. I, I just want to say that. I want to piss off any Kaiser Blue or whatever boo. I can, they can hear this. It's there funny. is a he, they, there are human bear traps. Okay. Oh yeah, they're, they're terrible. Yep, <clears throat> pretty much just a bear put, trap. Honestly, it's a big just box, big enough for a human. Oh, it's even worse than that because the big box. When you step on it, it will like the bars will go down, so your foot stuck in it. So you can't even release it. It's not like it's a yes. conventional bear trap. It's even more inhumane and made that you can't escape it without someone cutting it off. And it's made out of steel. So you have to amputate the foot, usually. The, um... Back to the, back to the topic of the bolter, though. I give it C, C, C minus, somewhere in there. I think, a, I think a C minus or a C should stand for a gun that is impractical or unfeasible to function as described in the fiction, but easily fixable. Pretty pretty reasonable, all told. Uh, you know, to fix. Not reasonable as it is. Just make it a big sniper rifle. Mm-hmm. There you go. And get rid of the gyro jets, please. Yeah. Shells are much better, and you have a much longer... You have more velocity... Effective range and uh, power if you just have a shell. I'm terrified of uh, 10 years from now when we have a proper 3D commercial printing of things. Somebody's going to print their own bolter with ammunition. It's oh, going to happen. I am. Okay. I'm stopping the black four-driver trucks. Okay. 
All right, join us again on another episode of So You Think You Can Science, where we will be talking about something else in fiction. Uh, obviously, we are up for uh, suggestions if you'd like to hear uh, whatever be talked about. We'll talk about it because, you know, we we just do whatever and we will talk about it. So hit us up with some suggestions uh, in the Twitter replies or the YouTube comments. As always, I've been Sergio. And and with here with Nick and Matt. I don't love you. See everybody. I hope you had fun.